marching to a different drummer as a new president takes office in Argentina. And as decision day approaches at the climate summit in Paris, we'll take you north to the front line of global warming. We're live in Alaska. Hello, we begin this news hour in Iraq, where the military says that it's making gains against the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant in Ramadi. But at least 27 of its soldiers were killed in the latest battle to recapture that strategic capital of Anbar province, the country's largest province. ISIL took control of Ramadi in May. Sonia Gallego reports. Cruising over the sprawling neighborhoods of Ramadi, areas that fell to ISIL some seven months ago, on the ground, Iraqi troops take control of a key military base, the Anbar Operation Command Center, a strategic building overlooking the parts of Ramadi still under the control of ISIL. Huge efforts and a huge victory. This victory adds to the victories which the Iraqi armed forces and the Iraqi army have achieved. But while government troops consolidate their gains, ISIL forces have continued to destroy infrastructure in the city. They bombed bridges into the center, their area of control. Iraqi intelligence estimates that up to 300 ISIL fighters are still holed up there. And they say that they are losing morale amid food and ammunition shortages after government forces cut off supply lines into the city. Iraq's armed forces also managed to repel ISIL counterattacks with coalition air support and Iraqi airstrikes using new equipment. For the first time in Iraq and the Arab world, Chinese drones of the CH-4 model have entered duty and we conducted operations using them more than two weeks ago covering vast areas nearly 250 kilometers from the city of Baghdad. The U.S. has also said it would deploy attack helicopters to help Iraqi troops finish the job. It won't be enough just to make gains in Ramadi. Their goal will be to get rid of ISIL from the city for good. Sonia Gallego, Al Jazeera. Meanwhile, the Pentagon has confirmed a new approach to tackling ISIL. It wants to link the operations of its bases around the world to better coordinate the response and military resources. The White House, though, has declined to comment. Let's go live now to Washington. Al Jazeera's Alan Fisher is there. So what exactly has the Pentagon got planned? Well, of course, there are around 800 military bases around the world, and the Pentagon wants to see them approach the problem of ISIL in a much better coordinated fashion. We're talking about bases in Europe, across Africa, and also in Asia. So the idea is that using the defense uh, strategies, defense uh, assets that they have, plus those of the CIA, everyone will be on the same page and be able to respond to ISIL and also any potential threat a lot quicker. Now, it's an idea that's been kicking around for a number of months, but Ash Carter, who is the defense secretary here in the United States, said it would give the U.S. an advantage and also help degrade ISIL. It takes, as is frequently noted, a network to fight a network. This is going to be our network for fighting ISIL on a regional and indeed a global uh, basis. So we are working on that. Uh, that's a proposal that we've been working on now for a number of months. Uh, I think it's a necessity. So what are the downsides here? Well, first of all, critics will say, look, if this was such a good strategy, why is it only now that the Defense Department is looking at this? The State Department also believes that it may not be a great idea to have American military assets in some of these countries, particularly in Africa, for an extended period of time. And of course, if you look back at what Barack Obama has said over the last seven years, that's something that he would be concerned about as well, which perhaps explains why the White House hasn't said that this is a definite plan. But certainly, the Pentagon is pushing ahead with this idea, believing it can present it to the White House and say, look, this is a really good thing if we want to confront ISIL. Also, it gives the administration the chance to say, we do have a plan, we do have a policy, we've always had a strategy, and this is how we will move it forward. Because, of course, one of the big criticisms of Barack Obama is that he hasn't known how to combat the threat of ISIL anywhere in the world.
Alan Fisher, live in Washington. Many thanks indeed. Let's uh, bring in Parry Pavel, who is the uh, director of the Brent Scowcroft Center on International Security at the Atlantic Council. He joins us now uh, live from Washington. Uh, Barry, as, as Alan was saying, the, this is an idea that's been kicking around for quite a while. In fact, you had a hand in the planning of it when you were at the Pentagon. Is it the most effective way to deal with ISIL? Well, just to be clear, I had a hand in planning uh, overseas base alignments, but uh, uh, that was way before the words ISIL was on everyone's lips. I mean, I think this is largely from, from the reporting, and this is all speculation at this point. I don't think there's a decision anytime soon. Uh, but I think this is largely using existing bases as well as existing access points. And when I say access points, I'm talking about an air an airstrip somewhere where maybe there's no one but they have an agreement with the host nation to use it when needed under certain conditions so using existing infrastructure in new and more strategic and more efficient ways for in particular SAF and intel assets so there's four hubs according to the reporting and many many spokes and so this is really just using what is already there in a way that can enable more rapid response and more um, more capable military operations overall. Ash Carter said that these, these, uh, these hubs and, and spokes uh, uh, will respond to a range of crises. Uh, what form are those likely to take, do you think? Well, the reporting focuses largely on counterterrorism missions, going after so-called high-value targets, uh, protect, coming to the, to the assistance of embassies if they're under attack, like happened in Benghazi. So this isn't going to be large conglomerations of uh, lots of military forces with lots of equipment in too many places that they aren't already. I think the reporting talked about four hubs, uh, one of them in Afghanistan, one of them in Djibouti at Camp Lemonier, and then another two, maybe one of them in the Gulf or in Iraq. And so I think this is pre-decisional from the reporting that I saw. And I think it might make sense. It's not earth shattering, but it enables more effective execution of strategies to deal with ISIS in the longer term okay, so than with it, other threats. It, it's not an expansion, but um, it's, it's a retooling, if you like, of, of present operations. Is there not a serious risk, though, that these special forces will end up being drawn into to combat with or against um, uh, uh, other uh, armed groups, regional affiliates of ISIL as well elsewhere in the world? Oh, definitely. But let's let's look at the, even the history over the last uh, year or so. We've taken out, or the U.S. military has taken out um, terrorist leaders or groupings in places like Libya um, and in lots of other places around the region. And so I think this isn't, um, you know, there's there's enough offshoots, unfortunately, already uh, that will keep the special forces, special operations forces, in business for quite a while. So th I think this is sort of a catch up to the realization that this is a significant region wide threat uh, and maybe even beyond the region. And so I think we'll be looking at access points or bases in southern Europe that can help to deal in a very efficient and hopefully uh, rapid fashion with fast breaking terrorist and what developments. Are, what are the, con uh, the, the cost implications of this? Is anyone going to bulk at the, at the cost? Well, the way it was reported, and again, this is speculation, so I just want to caution that uh, we could find out something new tomorrow. The way it was reported is this is just using a lot of existing infrastructure and access in smarter ways. So it's redeploying personnel in different ways and assets in different ways so that they're in the places you might need them most, then they can combine and go do their missions. The reporting talked about costs in the millions, so not, not tens of millions, not hundreds of millions and not billions. So we're not talking about building lots of uh, large new military bases. That is not what the reporting said at all. And we'll see what happens when the, when the real thing comes. Good to talk to you, Barry. Many thanks indeed. Barry Pavel there at the Atlantic Council. Okay. Syria.